Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Christine and this is Crochet Cricut. Um, today we're going to be doing another book sleeve together. Uh, we've previously done the pink colored book sleeve in another tutorial uh, which is a beginner level basic book sleeve. So if you would like to try a book sleeve um, but you want a more basic version than the one I'm going to show you today which is the blue one uh, then you can uh, head over and check out the um, other book sleeve tutorial for the um, basic one. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Okay so today I'm going to teach you guys how to do uh, this Royal Ridge book sleeve. It's slightly different than the original one that we did together which was all mostly half double crochet. Um, this one is also half double crochet, so you'll be able to continue with the stitch you already know. Um, and it gives these beautiful little stripes in there. It's worked in the round. Uh, we will join. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we'll finish with a different button attached at the top. So I'll show you guys the materials you're going to need for this. Okay, so what I've got here is some cotton yarn, um, a hook darning needle and a pair of scissors. Uh, you're also going to want a book and I'm going to do one of my Shannara books. This is my favorite one. Okay. Um, so for the cotton, I'm using um, a six, uh, eight, six rainbow. So this is like um, they do three, this is a hobby rainbow yarn and they do three different sizes. Um, the eight slash four is the smallest size and that's what I used on the pink um, book sleeve. I just did two uh, threads to make it thicker. This time I'm using a little bit of a thinner weight of yarn, but it's still a, a good weight. It's like a sport weight. If you have eight slash eight, then that's worsted. So you just want to find your cotton yarn. If you have something besides cotton that you want to use, that's fine. Uh, you can use acrylic or whatever it is that you want to use. I just find that cotton is really sturdy. Um, I like that it doesn't stretch a lot. So if you put a heavier book in there, it doesn't stretch as much as say like um, acrylic or something else would. And for your hook, you just want to take something that's not going to make uh, your book sleeve too drapey. You want it to kind of be a little stiff so it keeps the shape even when the book is not um, in it uh, is what I usually do. Okay, so that's the materials that you're going to need. Now for the construction, I'll just push all this away and bring the book sleeve here. Uh, so the construction of this book sleeve, uh, it starts out the same way as the other tutorial. So if you watch the first one, then you already know this part. Um, we're going to do single crochets at the bottom. And then we're going to do um, back loop only to make this little definition of the bottom of the book. Uh, and that'll be in continuous rounds. Then we're going to join and we're going to start doing half doubles and I'll show you how to do um, it's just a very small variation in the half double to get these ridges to show and this is the royal ridge stitch. So we'll start like that and then we'll do that all the way up to the top and about an inch or an inch and a half however much from the top you want. Um, you're just going to go back to single crochet and then we're going to finish off with this nice clean border. Uh, and when we're doing the border up here that's when we're going to make this attached so you don't have to like cut your yarn and rejoin. It's kind of all made in one piece. You're going to have very few tails uh, to do. Okay, so that's kind of the preview. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a slip knot. So I'm going to do that by wrapping my yarn around my finger twice, pinching the tails. I'm going to bring the back loop to the front of my finger and then I'm going to bring that back loop off the hook and it's going to trap the yarn and make a slip knot. That's how I do it. Okay, I'm going to insert my hook in the knot and then pull the short end tail. I'm going to leave it like a little loose. I don't want it to like choke the hook. Okay, and I'm going to make a chain that is the length of the bottom of the book. So this is how long I want my chain to be. And I believe I need something like 20, so I'm going to chain 20. There we 
There's my 20 stitches, my 20, my 20 chains. Um, and now I'm going to just see if that covers the bottom of my book. Okay. Actually, I could use one less because I don't want it to go past the end of my book. I want it to go just to the end of my book. So I'm going to take one away so I have 19 chains. All right. And you will have a different amount of chains. It depends on how big your book is. And it depends on how big your yarn is, how thick your yarn is as well. Okay. So I'm going to do single crochet for the bottom. So I'm going to do, I'm going to skip that first chain and I'm going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. This first stitch here is going to count as my end. Uh, and what I mean by that is on both ends of this chain, I'm going to have three stitches. I'm going to have three stitches on this end and three stitches on this end up here on the top. Um, each end, uh, the three stitches on each end is going to be my increases to turn. And we're going to work on both sides of this chain in a continuous round to make the base of the book. Okay, so I have one chain here. It counts as one of the three stitches we're going to have down here. I'm going to single crochet all the way down to the last stitch. Okay, I'm going to single crochet all the way down to the last stitch. And when you're doing your single crochets into this starting chain, don't use the back bumps. You need to just take one half of the chain because when you're coming back up the other side, you're gonna need the other half of that chain uh, to, to continue back up the other side. And because I had 19 chains, I should end up with 18 single crochets, but the one at the end counts for the end. So that leaves me with 16 in between the increases. <clears throat> I'll show you after. We get to the very last stitch here, and in that very last stitch, we're gonna do three to turn around the corner and make our increase And you might have to like pull back your end. Okay, and I'm going to count to see. I believe I have 16 chains in between my ends. So that first stitch I'm not counting. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, and then we have three on the end. So that means on this side, on the opposite side, I also am going to have 16 between the two um, ending clusters. So I'm gonna go back up this way and I'll meet you back when we get to that very last stitch. Okay, so now I have um, single crocheted up the other side. And you can see here, if I don't count the three on the end and I count all the way across, I have 16. So I have 16 on this side, 16 on this side, not counting that first crochet here. I'm back where I started into that first stitch. In that very first stitch up here, we're gonna put our other two um, of the three single crochets that we need on each end. So I'm gonna put two here, and that's gonna complete the round. Okay, so one, two, and then three. Those three count for the ending, and down here we have three. So the way we're gonna increase on this is for the three stitches on the end, the way we're gonna do the next round is out of these three stitches, the first one is gonna get two single crochets, the second one is gonna get three, and the third one is gonna get two. So it's gonna be two, three, two. And on this side, because our first stitch is actually part of those three on the end, the, that first stitch is gonna get the increase of two. Now I'm not gonna join, not for the base, we're gonna just keep around in continuous rounds for this. So I'm gonna go into that very first stitch that counts as my increase, and I'm going to do two stitches. If you wanna put a stitch marker on that first stitch, you can. Okay, and now I'm just gonna do one stitch in each stitch across until I get to the three stitches on the end, and I'll meet you back. 
So we're back and I am up to the increase on the end here. So I have my three stitches. In the first one, I'm gonna do two single crochets. That's one and two. In the second one, I'm gonna do three. One, two, three. And in the third one, I'm going to do two. And that is my increase for this round. Okay, and now I'm gonna go all the way back up the other side until I get to those two stitches because we already worked in the third one, right? When we started. So there's two stitches left on the end here. We're gonna work all the way back up to there and I'll meet you back. Okay, so we're back now. I'm gonna zoom in maybe to this part here. So we have two stitches left right here. Those were the last two we did. And then we have that first stitch where we did the, the increase at the beginning. So we need to do two stitches here and three stitches here. So let's do that now. Okay, so I'm going to do two stitches and then three stitches to finish that round. Okay, and we're back to the beginning. Now we're gonna hold this up to the book. I'm gonna just zoom out and see how it looks. Okay. So like, as you can see, that little bit there pretty much covers the end of the book. I mean, there's a little bit of space. I don't wanna go any bigger than that because the next round is going to be a back loop only, which is gonna make it like a little bit, it's not exactly gonna turn straight up at that point. Um, and then after that, we won't be increasing anymore. So this is big enough right now. So um, let's move on to the back loop only stitches. So for the next round, I'm gonna do a round of single crochet in the back loop only, and it gives us that little stitch definition here, that little ridge that I like to have at the base of things that I do. Okay, so if you haven't done a back loop only, there's always a V on the top of the stitch. There's two bars, right? So you have one here and one here. And usually you go under both. But when you're doing back loop only, all you have to do is take the one in the back and do your stitch into the back loop only. So that's what we're gonna do. <clears throat> so in this very first stitch uh, of this increase that we made on the previous round, we're just going to do a single crochet in the back loop only. And I'm just gonna do all the way around one single crochet in the back loop only. And I'm not stitching too tight here, you know? Um, just going around and it makes a little, a little ridge. So do that one stitch all the way around, uh, no more increases, unless your book um, is really thick and you need another round of increases, by all means do it. You'll just follow the same pattern of putting two, three, two in those increases um, and then uh, put the back loop only after that. So I'm just gonna do my back loop only round and then I'll meet you back. So I'm back and I've done my round of back loop only and you can see even though I didn't increase at all, it didn't turn at all. So <laughs> because this stitch, because we're going in just the back loop, it's like a little bit wider. Um, so it's still gonna fit fine on my book. That's why I didn't want the bottom of my book thing to be uh, too big. Now we were doing continuous rounds and we get up here back to the beginning and we have that first back loop only there and our last back loop only there and I kind of feel like it it doesn't line up completely but it lines up close enough to where it's kind of it's kind of hard to notice and it gives us a little bit like of a, a bottom kind of a turn like how this just kind of turns real nice on itself um, and we're gonna start now the special stitching for um, for the stripes and the first round is actually just half doubles um, but because we want um, like I mentioned maybe earlier we're doing um, uh, we can't do this in continuous rounds and the reason we can't do this in continuous rounds is because I don't do the stitch on every round it's too much it, it just doesn't look nice to me. So I do it on every other round. So we have a single crochet um, base, 
Then we have a round of half doubles, a round of Royal Ridge, a round of half doubles, a round of Royal Ridge. And so we alternate. And because we're alternating like that, we don't do continuous rounds. We have to join up. Um, and I have two ways of joining in here that I do. The first one is a bit more invisible. I'll show you how to get this effect. You can see it slightly going up the edge here. Um, there's just a tiny little gap there. Um, so that's kind of the special join that I'll show you. Um, and, and it's going to spin like this, right? So you're, you're here at the bottom corner of your book. And then as you go, your seam is going to go up like this. And it ends up being up here. Now, I on purpose switched to a more traditional join so that you could see the difference. This is a little bit more noticeable. So if you're a beginner and you're not used to doing like the special join that I do, you can do uh, a typical join. You're just going to have a seam like this coming around the side of your book. So this actually right here, I'm going to keep this as the front of my book and this is the back of my book. Um, because the seam is going to turn to the back. And I think it's a little bit more noticeable up here on the top. So that's why I put that at the back of my sleeve. I keep calling this a book, but it's a book sleeve. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do like a uh, special join. Uh, but the first one, I mean, we could just join regular for the first one. Actually, it's not a big deal. Um, and then chain up and what I'm going to do is all the way around I'm going to do one round of half doubles and then I'll meet you back uh, and if you don't know how to do a half double then I'll show you first a half double um, it's just you wrap the you yarn over the hook one time you go into your stitch you pull up a loop and then you pull through all three so yarn over pull up a loop pull through all three yarn over pull up a loop Go through all three and that is a half double in case you didn't know a half double um, and now let's do a half double all the way around until we get back to the start so i'm back and i've done a half double all the way around um, and i'm back to the start now this very first uh, thing right here that's actually not a stitch the way i can tell is like this was my first stitch and that was the stitch from the row below like you can tell this looks a little funny right so this right here is actually not a stitch. This is where I joined. It doesn't quite look like a stitch. That's because it's the, the joining. So I'm not going to go in there and make a stitch. Just be careful of that. Um, and now when joining, uh, the way that I joined for the more like less noticeable way um, is I would just pull this loop up slightly. Uh, and then I would put my, uh, insert my hook, well, you can drop the working yarn actually. Um, and then in the top of that first stitch that you have, and because I only chain one, it's a little bit tight in there. So, um, you know, you can chain one or two or whatever, but, um, so I go into the top of that first stitch and then I'm going to bring this loop and put it on the hook. Okay. And I can pull it a little bit tight. Uh, and then I'm going to pull that loop through the top of the stitch to the back of the yarn. Okay. So now we're at the back of the yarn. You want to make sure you keep your tail in the back and hold it like um, to this side here. So now by doing that, it's just like we won't have the chain up and the joining. And we do have this like little bar showing. We do have like this little bar showing there. If you just pull on it a bit, it becomes less noticeable. So my first stitch is actually this funky stitch right here. It kind of pushes it forward. And then this is my last stitch of the previous round. Okay. So now I'm going to show you how to do the Royal Ridge. Um, before I do, I just wanted to ask you guys if you're liking this video or any of the tutorials that I'm doing, uh, please make sure you like, uh, leave me a comment, letting me know, um, you know, how I can improve what you guys would like to see next or, you know, any other feedback you have um, and subscribe. So that helps my channel and helps me to keep uh, doing these videos for you guys. Okay. So to do the ridge, now you're still using a half double. So you're going to chain one, but because we joined in this way, the chain one is like to the back. So that helps hide the join. Um, and then we're going to be working into the back 
bump, the back bar. So if I flip this over, if you haven't done Royal Ridge before, um, all you're doing is you're picking up this, this bar in the back of the half double that's left from when you put, you know, when you wrap your yarn around, you get this third bar in the back. And it's actually pr really pretty when you do half doubles in rows because you get that little striping on one side on each alternating side. Um, but when you're doing it in a continuous round, it's always on the back side of the work. So what we're going to do on every other round is we're going to yarn over. We're going to find that loop on the back and you're going to half double into this loop. Okay, just like that. And so here's your typical, here's the V. We're going to leave that alone. That's what we want to push forward. Go to the back of the work and find that, that third bar and half double. And you can like keep your work like inside out almost. You don't have to have it like it's, you know, how you would typically hold it like to go in the front. You can kind of flip it inside out a little bit so you can see better the back. And so you're just going to go across grabbing always that back bar and doing a half double. So it's almost the same as the other book sleeve tutorial where you worked almost all in half doubles. This time you're just doing it into a different spot on the stitch, into the back of the stitch. And what it does is it pushes the V on the top of the stitch out, kind of like knit. It looks a little knitted when you do that. So if I tip this back forward, which you can see that's happening, uh, is we get this, this really cool stripe. Um, and so we're going to do this all the way around. Um, so you're going to do one round of half double, one round of Royal Ridge uh, with the special joining that I showed you all the way up to the top. Uh, I did, and this is like a typical size, like pa old paperback style books. So if you're doing a book that size, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I did ten stripes. Uh, of two stitches so that's half double and then royal ridge half double then royal ridge so i guess it's like 20 rows um and once you get up here to the very last one about an inch or an inch and a half from the top of your book come back and i'll show you how to do the finish and so i'm back i have finished all my rounds um and i think i must have used a bigger hook this time uh three and a half i can tell because my stripes here are a little bit closer together, I think. Yeah, just a little bit closer together. And I did like one extra down here at the bottom as well. So that's fine. Um, yours is going to come out uh, a little slightly different as well, depending on what you use. So I've done all my rounds and I did the join like I showed you where you just pull the working yarn through the first stitch. Um, and it's pretty well hidden. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, and then I've just continued. I didn't do a join here. So once you do your last Royal Ridge row and you get to the end, I just kept going with a single crochet. And now I'm going to single crochet this last inch here all the way up to the top. Uh, and then I will meet you back and I'll show you how I do the edging up here and this little lap I'm sorry how I do the edging up here and this little latch okay so I've went around and I've done I think like four rows of single crochet um, I did like I said I didn't join when I started my single crochet so I did continuous rounds um, so now I'm up here and I need to do like one more so now I will join because it will help even out that little dip that I have here. So I'm going to join. Oops, I keep forgetting to go in front. So I'm going to join and then I'm going to do one more. I'm going to chain up and do one more round of single crochet. Um, this will be my last round of single crochet. It's just going to help to even out that little dip I had from doing the continuous rounds uh, right there at the end. Uh, so you do your last row of single crochet and then we're going to start to do the border along the top 
and the latch. And I forgot to tell you at the beginning, you do need a button. So I guess I ought to edit that into the materials list, but we will need a button. And I'm playing a serious game of Yarn Frog right now. So we'll see. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna finish this row and we'll see uh, if I have enough to finish this. I'll be right back once we've done my single crochet round. Okay, so I'm back around. Uh, you can see here we're actually joined on that last round. So I have my join and I have my chain one. So this is actually the first stitch. So I'm going to join now into that real first stitch and it'll close up this little gap that I have. <clears throat> and I'm going to now um, continue around. We're going to like slip stitch all the way around to the front and then all the way to the back. Um, and what we're going to do is right before we get to where we're supposed to be finished, we're going to chain up a chain uh, that will reach over here to be our flap for our, our little latch. Um, we'll chain up and we'll do one, two, three rows. Um, and we'll leave a little buttonhole in that. So I will show you that. I'm just going to slip stitch all the way around here, all the way around the front, all the way back, until I get to the point where I need to start my latch. Okay, and you'll just need to eyeball it. You'll need to see like, okay, how much I need to be in three stitches. It's gonna take three stitches wide, so find the three stitches in the middle that you wanna use, and when you get to that point, um, meet me back. Okay, so I've slip stitched all the way to the back. I've just like, before um, where the join was, I have this little space left here, and I still need to do my, um, my latch so I'm gonna put the book in the book sleeve because I want to see if I'm eyeballing it right for the middle of where my latch should be so let's put the book sleeve on and see how it's looking okay so this is how it looks it looks pretty good straighten it up I make sure I kind of got it in there straight the front and the bottom it's all like straight okay so that's how it looks in the front right um, and on the back if I'm going to chain up now does it fall like in in the middle of where three stitches would be that's what I have to ask myself and if I were to do three stitches so I'm just kind of like, it looks about right to me. So I'm going to give it a go. Okay, and the amount that we chain up, we're just going to chain up while we have the book sleeve on to make sure that the chain is long enough. Okay, so I have the book sleeve on. Let's do some chains and see how long we need this to be. I did 10. Okay. I'm just going to bring that around. 10 chains. I think I could do one more. Yeah. So I'm just saying, I'm just pulling it around to see like, if that would work. I think so. So now I've got my. 10 chains. Okay. Might be tricky to keep this in frame. Here we go. So I'm going to skip the first stitch and then I'm going to single crochet back across this chain. Actually, I'm going to go in the two loops, go back across it. to 
keep it in, in frame for you. Okay, the last one. It's a little bit challenging to do on camera <laughs> on the table. Uh, okay, so I did my chains and then I, I crocheted back up all the way. Uh, and now I'm gonna slip stitch into that stitch there, all right, to kind of move forward. And then I'm going to turn it and on the other side, I think I really do now have to take it off the bookshelf and the book out of it. And we'll finish that like this. Okay, so we'll just go back across this little, um, I'll turn it the other way, this way. Okay, so we're going to go back across and do single crochets back up. And at the very end, if you're going to use a small button, like I did last time, I used like just this very, it's not a very big button. Um, I left two stitches at the end open. For the button hole. If you're going to use a bigger button, then maybe you might want to leave three space, three spaces. Okay, so I'm single crocheting back across to the end one, two, and then at the end one, two. So I'll chain two, leave two spaces for the button hole, and in the last one, I'll do a single crochet. Okay, and now you're going to do your last. I'm not chaining, actually. I don't think I need to chain to add more bulk when I do these rows here. I'm just turning. Um, so I have one stitch on the end, and then I have uh, two stitches here, and I usually just go into the chains. Did that one a little bit tight. Just go into your chains. Okay, and that leaves you with a buttonhole, which you can, you know, you'll have your buttonhole there, and then single crochet all the way back up that little tab you're making, that little strap. It's just three. I'm really playing the yarn frog. Oh my gosh. I think I'll make it. <laughs> And, and it does, like, you can do this with one ball. I just had to use this yarn for something else. Okay, so we get back to the end. And I did that first stitch a little bit loose right there. But I'm not pulling it out. Like, I could have done it tighter, but I won't pull it out while we're on camera. Okay, when you get back, again, secure yourself into the next stitch there. Now... If you're happy with that, you can just leave it like that. But what I like to do is, um, before I slip stitch over here to finish, I continue, and let's see if I have enough yarn. I like to slip stitch around this little um, attach that I've done. So I just outline it. I just slip it into there, slip stitch into there, and then just keep slip stitching and what I think in my opinion that it does it just like makes it look more finished make it look square just give it a tug and I slip stitch all the way around this little thing here And we're working like all in one go. So 
you know, even though you have this attach here, um, there's no sewing or adjoining more yarn or any of that mess. So you're working all in one go. And then again, doing the surface crochet. And back up this last side slip stitch. And now we're just slip stitching our very last few stitches. And just so little yarn left. It's going to be so. I have to sew the button on too. So I need just a tiny bit of yarn for that. Oh my goodness. I'm going to make it. Okay, get back to the beginning and then that little bit of slip stitching that we didn't finish yet. From here, there's like three stitches left, right? So you're going to do those last few stitches. There we go. We made it. Back. I think I did one too many. Good. And then you can cut the yarn or you can <laughs> pull it through if you've used absolutely all of your yarn, like I have. Um, actually, I have just enough to do my button. So I'm going to cut this and pull that through and we'll sew that. Oops. And I've got my little attach. I did a little tight here at the base, but you can kind of pull it into place. You know, I've got that little tab there. Um, flip it over, then we'll see where we need to put our button. It's normal that it sticks up a little bit because your book is thick, right? And we'll put the book in again. Let's see how it looks with our book. Okay. It's looking pretty, pretty good. And then that's gonna go like that and not bad so let's find a button I'm gonna bring over my one of my buttons I have two of these these little jars I keep my buttons in um what color do we want um, this is from a pair of jeans <laughs> okay art Armit jeans, all gray on gray. That's maybe, doesn't stand out enough. Maybe we want a red button. Oh, how do we like red? Okay, I'm gonna pause it and find a button. Okay, so I found a purple button. I'm gonna attach right here. I just need to go and find with my needles, a needle that fits through the button. Um, for me, that's what I recommend with darning needles is that you have some with a small eye because you can always pull the fibers apart and use the same color to attach your button. I actually don't need to pull the fibers apart because this is already thin enough to fit through these holes. Um, so I'm just gonna go find another darning needle. Okay, so I have my little thing of darning needles. I really like this thing. It's nice to have all your darning needles in one place. So I'm just gonna find one. That fits through. That's good, and the hole is kind of big enough. So let's see, can we get this yarn through this hole? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. I accidentally put a knot in my freaking yarn. Okay. Cut that off. Still have enough. So we're just going to attach this button. I usually like to have the cover on when I kind of figure out where I want my button to be. Looks good to me. And then I go from the back. And I just get started with it. And you can do um, X's or you can do straight across. I just leave like a 
a little bit in the back because I just tie it right like a little bit back there um, and you can do straight across or you can do X's I think I'll do X's okay I'm gonna pull those too tight and then do it again Pulling my tails tight. Looks pretty good to me. And then before I like tie anything in or sew it in, I'll just see how it looks when it's fastened. Did I put the button too high or is it okay? Let's see. Well, it's okay to me. I'm pleased with that. It's not quite as low as this one. This one I put a hair lower. So the button is a tiny bit lower. I'm okay with this. I could have put it a tiny bit lower, but I think it looks good like that. And now I just have my tails here. So I will tie them together. I tie them twice and then you can leave the tails long enough to sew them in in the back after you tie your button down um, but I'm not too concerned about that with my button um, so I'm just gonna cut mine I saw on buttons all the time so I'm just gonna snip my tails but like I said you could leave the tails long and sew them in on your book sleeves if you want there all done the only tails I have left to sew in that I didn't sew in are the starting tails on the inside at the bottom of the, the book sleeve and now I have a finished book sleeve to go with my collection of finished book sleeves <laughs> uh, and I really do enjoy doing these and also I I have some straps that I do. Um, actually, I'll show you guys straps that I do that are attachable for my other bags. I'll be right back. Okay, and so if you want to turn your book sleeve into a book pouch, you can just make some some little um, straps. Uh, the, this is a strap that I use, and so um, I can do another tutorial to show you guys how to make these straps if you're interested just leave a comment below uh, and then you can just clip it on and if you're going to carry something other than a book in here though it's going to be heavier you're going to want to put some metal rings right so that you have stability but like these straps here would be fine to carry a book and I can make a tutorial to show you guys how to make those attachable straps. So if you enjoyed this video tutorial, please like and comment and subscribe uh, and let me know what else you would like to see. Thank you. Have a great day.